article went on to say this. This was an article written about me. I'll tell you the science very soon. Okay? This one first. When the millennium was coming to an end, Time Sport decided to list Singapore's 50 greatest athletes of the last century. And so, they started listing on every Sunday. If you go to a website called getforme.com and type in Singapore's 50 greatest athletes, you will see a list. Like this. And you can see my name, eighth on the list. Not so good. James is here, James is here, next to me. So you can see all these people who are 1, 2, 8 there. But 8 is not very good. Yeah, but I think it's okay la, for me la, because I was a frail looking boy. So, so 8 is okay. But this is what was written in this article. When somebody was named that Sunday, somebody will write about that person. And so for me, my coach of 30 years before wrote this article. And this is what he wrote. He said, when I first spotted him in late 1962, he was a student teacher. After school, you know, I just finished schooling, I was going to be a teacher. And he said this, despite his late start and small build, he was one of Asia's athletic giants. Late start, I was born in 1942 and I started in 1962. I was already 20 by then. So it's not too late for young people. Small deal, I think you can see them, huh? <laughs> you know, this is a picture of me when I played soccer for the teacher's union. <laughs> I'm the one. But, he said this. This is a science. He said, sprinters are born. Born with fast legs. I will talk about this. Now I'll talk about the endurance people a little bit. So what is this fast legs? At least. You know, this is genetics. I saw this article some time back. It says, this is about a French mathematician. He says, my brain sometimes works very, very fast. And this is a sum that he can do mentally. Let me show you. This is a 200 digit random number, 13 through, and he will give you the answer. In 72 seconds, he will give you the answer. Born. And then, this woman, she is a musical genius. Her IQ is very low. She can't do 10 minus 5. But she can sing 2,000 songs by heart in 30 languages, play the accordion, keyboard, piano. Born. And so athletes are also born. Swimmers, they are born with webbing between the fingers. <laughs> How about this guy? World record holder. Born with speed. Also, born with this. Hi, 195. Me, I'm not even 165. <laughs> Who's this one here? Power, <laughs> yes, of course. He was here last year for the Youth Olympic Games. We can see. The only thing similar about two of us is that we have bald head and same color. But. This is it, isn't it? You here, you are born with superb genes. Hard work, yes. I think you and your coaches will get the hard work done. Next, and then, then the science of it. So what is this genes and the science? I want to show you. Here. Fast legs. What is the meaning of fast legs? Before I tell you that. You know, there was a little article in O3, in the newspapers. Three boys got together at the void deck and they wait for another student to pass by holding the handphone. 
One of them will go up to this boy and say, hey, can I borrow your phone? It's an emergency. He says, okay, yeah. Give me the phone. It's wrong. They... And so, who was the guy who would go up and get the phone? Sam. Sam was tasked to approach the victim as he was the fastest runner in his game. Gone. <laughs> Cannot catch them. Of course, they got caught later on. Right? But, this is it. This is what you are born with. We, we have nerves. The nerves from the central nervous system will call the muscles to work. But the, the muscles will not work until the message comes. The message comes through the nerves. We have two types of nerves. One is a slow nerve. The message will come from the, from the central nervous system to the muscle in 21 to 36 kilometers per hour. If you are born with a fast nerve, this is the 10 times faster. The message comes from the central nervous system to the muscle 10 times faster. So your muscles will react 10 times faster than the next person. Where do you get this from? Genes. You are up there, you are lining up, they ask you, Oi, what do you want to be? Then you tell them what do you want to be. Yeah? Some are given fast hands, they become good badminton players, table tennis players. Some are born with fast eyes and hands. You can see a ball coming, etc. Some are born with fast mouth. I don't know what that is good for. <laughs> but you are born. So this is uh, the our nervous system I want to tell you about. Uh, you can see, huh, from the central nervous system, these messages come to the muscle and the muscles will start to work. Can you train this? You cannot train nerves. You asked for it and they gave it to you up there. That's it. So you are gifted. So you must not waste the gift. But, we can train one part of this, and that is, you can train this nerve and all the fibers that it recruits by doing the right kind of training. So, you and your coaches and the parents must Google and see how to train nerves. What can we train the nerves? Uh, which part of the nerves can we train? What kind of training can we do to improve nerve transmission? Improve nerve transmission or improve the recruitment of the right uh, muscle fibers. Okay, yeah? So that's one thing. The other thing is this. You can have fast nerves. It will get you out fast from the blocks. But if you're a sprinter, then these nerves can only send messages to the muscle, but the muscle must keep working. For the muscles to keep working, this is the structure inside every muscle fiber. You have, this is found inside one muscle fiber. One muscle fiber is the, is the thickness of, can you fill the blank? Hair, yes, for sure. One hair-like structure. Inside the hair like structure, you have all these things. These are protein threads. And, but these must work. For these to work, you need energy and you have to have the chemical production of energy. But I will explain that some other time in detail. Right? But, let me go on quickly. That's for the if the energy is not coming enough in, in right amounts or fast enough, you can go up to 10 meters, 15 meters, and then the others will catch you also. But if you can train 
and make sure that the energy production system is well, is well developed, you can supply the energy to the muscle to keep working. The nerves are calling the muscles and the muscle engines are giving the energy for the muscles to work. Next time I meet you, I will explain this part clearly. That part can be trained. The making of energy can be trained. Calling the, the nerves, calling the muscle, that's it. Once the, all the nerves are already calling, you can't call any faster, you can't call any more oil. But the muscles can keep working for longer period of time, longer than your opponent. That can be trained. Then I'm talking to the throwers now. You must have bigger muscles because if that one hair-like structure, you can make it double size. That means inside there, there are many protein threads and they all are working very strongly. I'll explain that some other time also. But you must make this one muscle fiber bigger. Make more of those proteins inside the muscle fiber. How can you do that? Yes, you can see here, muscles, muscle can grow. This is before training, is this size. 8 weeks later, 24 weeks later, 60 weeks later. Muscle size can grow because inside the protein threads can be increased. Okay? Let me go on a bit. So here we have an example. Huh? This is time. This is your <coughs> strength. Yeah, strength. Your strength comes from nerve adaptation and hypertrophy that means muscle becoming bigger the first few weeks of training is the nerve that's giving you most most of the strength how come when you are doing weight training your nerves are calling all the fibers that are available that is the first part of the training but all of you you have passed that stage already all the muscles are working you now have to get this kind of training, the hypertrophy, get the muscles bigger, and then your strength will also keep on increasing. Of course, you have this dotted line here. Your strength can increase a bit more. Your muscles can grow a bit more if you take steroids. But you must not take steroids. Because we are testing you constantly. We will come to your house at midnight and knock on the door and say, give me your urine now. So please, don't go down this path. Nobody must go down this path because it is really disgraceful. Not only for you, for your parents, for your girlfriends, for your boyfriends, for us. So do. Alright? Science will help you. Nothing makes you stronger and bigger like steroids. But you must not go there. Okay. Now, I want to talk, take a few minutes to talk about the endurance people now. This was an article in the, in the Reader's Digest some time ago. A run for their lives. This was brother and sister, they had gone camping up in the mountains. And they heard an airplane in trouble. Small plane, trouble. And then it crashed. Two, they ran to this site and then they saw two, the two, uh, three people coming out from the plane. Faces were scorched, blistered the size of golf ball. One of them had injured legs. Something was wrong with the back. Both men were in severe pain. This woman, Lin, she asked them, did you call for help? They said, no, no time to call for help. And Lin, Lin, the, runner, uh, Lin the woman, she said, Lin knew of only one other alternative. They were more than 3,000 meters above sea level, in the middle of more than 100,000 hectares of wilderness, and her car was 30 kilometers from the crash site. And she said, I'm a distance runner. I will go for help. 
and she went. 30 kilometers to a car, drove a car to the ranger station, got a helicopter in, picked up these two men, and the men were saved. Because Lynn can run 30 kilometers. And yet, I saw this in the newspapers. This guy, after the PPT test, after doing all the tests, he gave his number to his friend to run the 2.4. Lin can run 30 kilometers without trouble. This guy, 2.4, he can't run. So, you, you know, what kind of training, what kind of adaptation do the endurance runners have? And, and all this kind of training that people do, how do you explain this? Only when you know the science, then you can explain. Alright, I'm going to skip this. Yeah? But there is all this kind of information uh, of endurance runners and speed uh, runners to do the training and so forth. What are we training for? All these enzymes we are training for. Coaches and athletes, you must know all these enzymes that we have. Cytochrome oxidase, succinate dehydrogenase, citrate synthase. These are not terms for passing exams. This is for us, athletes. When we understand where is citrate synthase used in the energy production system, when you run, you tell yourself, this is for citrate synthase. <coughs> then the second one is for succinate dehydrogenase. Yeah? All the time, you've got to have a motivation. When you're tired, you talk about these things. Let me go on, very quickly. For endurance runners, these are the type of things that you will get when you do training. Bigger lungs, bigger heart, more and bigger mitochondria. All must learn this word, mitochondria. More blood capillaries, more hemoglobin, more myoglobin. You can see conditioning and muscle metabolism in children and adults after training. You can see in a, in a book, they will tell you. Even in children, oh, sorry. We have uh, mitochondria. Number and volume can increase. At the moment, we have information for adults only. We don't know whether mitochondria in children will increase or not. Glycogen stores will increase with training. Both. We have evidence. Myoglobin and all the other enzymes I talked about just now. Next time, I will talk in detail. But you can see, those who are endurance runners, these are the things that you will get. Stroke volume, heart volume, blood volume, everything can increase. How about these capillaries? Increased by 20% with 2 to 3 months of training. Capillaries increasing 60% with 2 to 3 years of training. Capillaries. So, this is mitochondria. Find out what is the purpose of mitochondria. I think those who are in the medical line will know this. Otherwise, all must know this. Huh? And these are capillaries in the endurance runners. You can see in the sprinters, the capillaries around the muscle fiber are like this. Not so many. Endurance runners, you will have more capillaries. Right? So next time, I will talk a little bit about this. But I want to show you this again. Last time I showed you this. For endurance runners, this was advertised by the uh, Changi Medical Center. And they are advertising they are advertising this. VO2 max. All endurance runners, have we done our VO2 max test? If not, we have to do it. Anaerobic threshold. Running economy. All these things will improve with the right kind of endurance training. Right? Okay. I will skip this. Not important now. So the endurance runners must come from these people. You are born with a bit more mitochondria, a bit more right muscle kind of fibers, a bit uh, uh, the correct nerves, but we got to do the right kind of training. Okay, so where are our endurance runners? Our endurance events have not been doing very well. So let's find out why. Is it because our races are in the hot sun? There, we'll try, we'll have it in the evening and see whether improvement is there or whether it is training. <laughs> and these are the endurance runners. For me, I like to ride endurance run, run, running, but 
uh, I have always excuses. We went to this uh, prison run with a PC supplier, one time record holder, this me, but I did not run. I had a good excuse. It was raining and my, thumb, my glasses were misting. No excuses for the rest of you who are endurance runners. Rain or shine. Okay. I will skip this. Yeah. Let me go on. Should we finish? Should we stop? Okay. <laughs> Let me do this. Huh? Let me go back. I think you can, you can take this. Okay. Here. But being born fast is not enough. The talent has to be nurtured. You have coaches to nurture you. Very good. Uh, this was my coach who nurtured my talent from 1963 to 1970. In this article, he said this. A number of things had to be done to help him reach his target. Strike length only 5 feet had to increase to 9 feet. I think you don't understand this feet. Well, let me show you in metric. This is strike length. And this is, he said, when he first saw me, my strike length was 1.52 meters. And after training, increased to 2.74 meters. To achieve this, he had to do weight training. When we first, in 1960s, I think Chapi will know all these things. Huh? When Tan En Yun came and started coaching in the late 50s, nobody will believe him about weight training. At that time, sports people never do weight training. Weight training was only done by bodybuilders. Then Tan En Yun came and said, hey, we must do weight training for, for uh, athletics also. But we didn't have such nice facilities. This was our training ground, 215 Dorset Road. Our weights were kept under the house. And we had to go in and under the house and bring everything out. And Tan Eng had to talk to this guy, Dr. Yap, Mr. Yap. This was his house. He said, hey, let us do weight training. Because he was a bodybuilder, I said, okay, okay, come on. We let you train. And this is the equipment that we had. Homemade squat stand. And this is where we train, under the Rambutan tree. <laughs> we didn't have facilities at all. But weight training brought me from this size to this size. So must do. And flexibility. We never do stretching in those days. If we do stretching, if men do stretching, they think something wrong with you. <laughs> we didn't know we can do stretching like this and have so much fun. Like this. Like this. <laughs> hey, from today onwards, huh? You see a lamppost thing up. <laughs> and then must do starting technique also. When I was in school, I never was a runner. And so we had to do many, many, many starts. Yeah? Endless starting practice. Fingers, some, sometimes it's getting late. And then I'm thinking, wow, oh, I'm a school teacher. I must go home and mark books. My fingers are aching already. Maybe if I look at the coach, the coach will pity me. I say, okay, stop training. More work, it's getting dark. And then, you know, in the dark, you can't see me. I'm an Indian. <laughs> but I look at his face. I'm thinking that maybe you give chance. No, this coach never gives chance. Oh, I put this picture here just to show you. Last time I had lots of hair on my head. Now I have HIV. <laughs> Hair is vanishing. <laughs> but this is the coach, huh? Coach, you see? This is the Edinburgh. Me. You are shivering in the cold. But this is the coach. He will wear a raincoat and come. So you think they will pity you? No, this kind of coach won't pity you. I look at his face, I know what he's saying. He said, never mind, won't die, carry on. So we keep on training. Yeah, this is the kind of coach, huh? But this is what he wrote in this paragraph. He said, he worked very hard once he was convinced of what he could achieve. He was a model athlete and a role model, he said. And so, whether you are white or brown, 
or black. We must have abs like this. You must have muscles like this. In Singapore, we have a problem with... No, we don't have a problem with girls. Girls are not scared of muscles. They are scared that the boys are scared of muscles on them. <laughs> so we have to change this mindset. We must not be afraid of muscles. So we all have a big duty huh, of making sure that we have these muscles. It's okay, you see? Muscles, but look how pretty she looks. No problem. She was here last year, and we went and took a picture with her, you see? So nice. Girls, no need to be scared. Nice makeup, nice clothes, muscles are hidden. Okay? And your performance will be there. So let us, all brothers and fathers and uncles, encourage our daughters really clean up. And then all you guys, you must not be biased against muscles on girls. And then only our girls will do well. Okay, all the hard work will pay off, right? For me, I was inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame, and then this magazine said this, it was only sheer, it was only through sheer determination and sacrifice that he was able to achieve greatness in his chosen sport and sports salutes athletes like me. Wow, get salutes. And so the salutes is not important. This is important. <laughs> when you are inducted into the Hall of Fame, they give you a gold card. And I never leave home without this card. And this card. I also never leave home without this. The watch. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I tell you. In 1968, I was named the Sportsman of the Year. I got $5,000 for the association. 1969, another $5,000 for the association. $10,000 in those days was really big money. In 1967, we bought a HDB flat, three bedrooms, the biggest flat available at that time. $12,000. So can you imagine $10,000 for the association? The association was very, very grateful. So they bought me this watch, an Omega watch, for $300. $300 is not small money. It was one month's salary, teacher, at that time. But anyway, I of course, I put this picture here to show you the apps. <laughs> Afterwards, we are testing, okay? See who can do how many push up, uh, sit ups in one minute. <laughs> no, let me go back to this gold card. This gold card is so important to me. The gold card says this. It is valid for the Hall of Famers, free admission to SSC swimming complexes and club fit gymnasiums. I am 69 years old this year. This card, I go for a swim or do some gym. I save 50 cents. <laughs> so, hard work is worth it at the end of the day, okay? <laughs> Guys and girls. Very quickly, I want to run through this also. 